Hello there everyone, this is the Naster Chief One, and welcome to my croc, Legends of the Gobbos Walkthrough Part Part 3. In this part, um, we are going to commence with the with the rest of um, World Fo World 2 um, right now. Well, at least get through most of World 2. There will still be like a few levels left for me to get get through by the very end of the video, and also the final boss in the net you'll, that you'll see in the next part also. Anyway, as you can probably notice, I fixed up my audio lag issues. You're probably wondering, how did I fix up my audio lag issues? Well, I decided to re-record Croc again. But also, I decided to re-record the remainder of my Croc walkthrough um, on the PS3. So now, the quality looks even better also, as you can probably tell. I also did the same thing for my next upcoming walkthrough as well. Or in other words, the sequel to the to Croc. Croc 2. But aside from that, um, let's proceed on with the game. Anyway, trying to jump on this gear is kind of tricky as you just saw. Um, you're going to have to make a big run, run jump to hopefully land on it. And you're going to have to wait until one of those big square um, gear ends um, is away before you have a chance to grab onto the end. But if you can make a good enough run jump, you won't need to grab onto one, the gear ledge. Okay, don't destroy this box. Instead, use it as a platform and jump up here. All right. Now slam the crate and you'll be able to get the f final crystal that you're going to need. Okay, as for the as for this additional bonus challenge, welcome to the second most annoying type of challenge in all of Croc 2. This challenge requires you to have to move this pot using these buttons in order for you to collect the gems. This is much trickier than you think because you have to know the exact position um, that the gem is going to um, be at in order for it to drop into the pot. I don't ex successfully get it my first time. I was, I kind of was good and almost was able to get the, at least the first heart piece, but as you just saw, I just fell into the cold, freezing water. Trust me, trying to maintain Croc's position and jumping on the buttons is what makes this challenge a lot more annoying and tougher than it should be. Anyway, what I just experienced is the easier out of the... T out of the two um, challenges that are similar to this in the game of Croc. You're going to experience a second one in an upcoming level later on. But as for right now, um, right now, all you should, should be concerned about is, is that challenge right there. I'll go back way later in the walkthrough and I'm going to show you how to be able to accomplish it.
I'm happy enough to say that compared to the bad jumping mechanics that Croc, um, ha that the game Croc has for Croc when it comes to ground combat and stuff, I'm fortunate enough to say say that swimming controls actually work a whole lot better than, um, than actually ground-based controls. I don't know if you heard me say that in the last part, but yes. Swimming controls, as you can see, work so much better than ground-based controls. Well, when it comes to jumping, and sometimes when it comes to croc grabbing onto led ledges in order to lift himself up in this game. I really don't know why it's such a problem here and there, but... But, oh well, um, oh well, once you've actually learned how to be able to play this game, game skillfully enough, and actually know how to do everything, um, it actually isn't nearly as much of a pain in the butt as it will be for your first time playing this game. Anyway, this kind of challenge, as you can see, you're going to have to try and um, jump on top of the top of the crate as you just saw me do um, when it bounces backwards from a when the box bounces backwards from a wall it will try to um, repel and run away from you but that's the strategy wait until the box backs itself up or at least goes to, to a somewhat diagonal um, direction if it has the opportunity to and it's not cornered cornered and then try to jump on the top of the box and then slam down to it to get the gobbo You'll experience another similar challenge to this in a later level, like I just said before, before with the pot challenge also. Now those wooden platforms will become more of an annoyance um, later on on in the game game and for later levels but as for right now they're not nearly that much of a frustration also keep in mind I forgot to mention this but whenever croc is on ice um, it's a lot more slippery slipperier and difficult to control croc than it would normally be Sorry that I took the long way to getting back there, but I but I kind of forgot that I could have. Oh yeah, right. I needed the key to be able to um, get the gobble. Sorry about that. Yes, you do actually come back here for a good reason. And also, yeah, the other key is used for this. I was thinking about an earlier part. Yes. Do go into this room, use the key to unlock the Gobbo's cage, and then use the other key to unlock the, the gate that leads to the end point. This may look overwhelming, but I ensure you that um, if you time your jumps correctly, you'll be able to get um, through this no problem. And that's a strategy you should keep in mind whenever it comes towards the challenges regarding regarding the, regarding anything um, for jumps and whatnot in the croc games. Is to just time your jump. It's just to time the jumps. I know it's annoying, I know it really is, that, that Croc can't be able to jump preci more precisely and accurately like other video game characters, but you've got to do it. It's just a given. And also, in order for Croc to be able to turn around 
no problem in this game. You gotta, you're gonna have to um, move Croc using the circle button whenever um, he's not in the right direction you want him to be for his jumps. Alright, Baron Dante for this one gets really lazy. <laughs> yeah, he just straps a rocket on the back of a random creature. Man, that was so pathetic. <laughs> I'm just saying, considering um, how he's actually used his magic to transform other um, animals into certain monsters in order to um, battle Croc and whatnot, um, it just seems kind of lazy in my opinion. Okay, the idea here is just to wait until this guy, guy's um, rocket runs out of gas that's on his back, and once he crash lands down, then you hit him immediately. Yep, just like that. Me? <gasps> I'm so sorry that the commentary was so darn low in the last two parts, but um, as you can e perfectly hear now, I'm actually speaking a lot more fluently, and I'm more used to being able to speak commentary now. I'm sorry that I stuttered and hesitated here and there um, when it came towards my Sly Cooper Thieves in Time walkthrough, but I'm glad. But I just hope that now everybody will appreciate my commentary now that I'm not um, f that now that I'm not stuttering consistently. I mean, I may be doing it just a few times here and there, but it's not nearly as bad as it once was. Go through this door because there is no way you can unlock that um, cage any other way. Alright, I really love this secret area the most out of any other secret area in the game. You're probably wondering, why do I love this one so much? Well, as you can already see, it gives you five heart pieces as long as you don't hit that magical portal that will take you, that magic that will t take you back. Just 
make sure that you, uh, when you're on the platform, instant on these platforms, instantly jump and then um, jump back because, of course, the platform's going to fall back into the cold, freezing water again. Anyway. As you've already seen, awesomely enough, I have just gained back five lives. All right, hit all these buttons and um, the rest should be pretty obvious. Just avoid all those annoying penguins, or at least try your best. Because, of course, you're on ice, and Croc um, is not very, very good to control on ice, and you're going to, of course, have to jump in order for Croc to maintain his position on, on these um, ground platforms. These icy ground platforms. Air was itchy. Okay, this next part is kind of tough and it's somewhat annoying. You're going to have to make some pretty good jumps in order to get, get through this little region. As you can already see, you cannot obtain the crystals or whatever, or what's in the, cr or what's in the crates on top of that um, grating up there, up there. But don't fret; you just have to make some more well-timed jumps across these platforms, and then um, press this button, and it will create a platform that will allow Croc to be able to get up there and collect those um, certain stuff. And of course, it's needed, needed especially if you're trying to get 100%, because of course there's a gobbo in one of these crates. <laughs> Sorry, my bad, my bad. No gobbos, just a yellow crystal that you that you're going to need, and some more normal gems that. As you can already see, you're going to, you're actually going to need in order to be able to um, help you get through the obstacles um, coming up. Yeah, there's the gobbo. Okay. I kind of was being stupid when I did this um, a little bit at first, but the, but the actual idea here is when you hit the button, immediately um, jump onto, the, um, jump onto um, it from the left side rather than the right side.
yeah, I know. This one was so simple. Simple. I had to check to see um, whether or not there was more to do, but there isn't. Yeah, this is without a doubt the easiest bonus challenge of all in the entire game. And I'm being serious about that. Okay, instead of trying to make some so-called leap of faith um, down there, just jump down those, jump down to these platforms, like I said, and then wait until one of the moving platforms, as you see, um, gets close in order to hopefully jump and land on it instead of landing in the cold, freezing water. Then jump into, jump into the middle in order to collect the red gem. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about this. Do not forget to grab um, and smash down um, those crates that contain gems in them. Okay, you're going to experience a new type of platform coming up. Um, be wary, these platforms instantly drop when you fall on them instantaneously. So that means jump off them as soon as you land on them. Yeah, and, well, and introducing a new pain in the butt enemy. Behold, the, the, the Devil Dantinis. Um, these guys are going to be the most pain in the butt enemy you're ever going to experience in all of Croc. And as you can already see, you already know why these guys are such a pain in the butt. Anyway, um, anyway, these Dantini jerks, are, Dantini jerks will also be more annoying, annoying because you're going to have to avoid their blast fire. Um, there is a strategy um, to beating them where you can jump over them and then hit them, but trust me, sometimes they are so accurate with their blasts, it is completely unreal, and sometimes it's a real, it's a real, like I just said, pain in the butt, and also a pain in the butt in order to maintain your gem count, when, of course, when you get hit, because every single time you get hit in this darn game, um, Croc loses, um, can pretty much lose all of his gems unless you decide to recollect whatever you possibly can before they vanish. Sorry, my bad. Devil Dantini's appeared in that in the second um ever in the second um level of Croc. But yeah, as you can already see, Dave, they become more of a pain in the butt when it comes toward when it comes towards um later levels the further you go. Now that I've collected the key, um we can come back here and um, and collect all the gems in this um, crate and also collect a, as you just saw, an important gobble that you're going to need.
Okay. Introducing you to a kind of complicated, somewhat annoying set of platform jumps. As you can see, you're supposed to collect it, collect the purple gem, gem by jumping up to that platform that's about to drop down into the freezing cold water again, 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 and everything, and everything, thing, and then jump onto the next platform. Trust me when I tell you. I'm trying to get this, this gem was kind of a pain in the butt. This all requires um, good timing, and I literally mean good timing. Okay, now that we've got gotten the final gem, even though it was the most annoying one to be able to get in this level, and I'm being serious, you'll probably find it to be the most annoying one to get too. Now we go on to the bonus round. Okay, introducing something that is kind of a real pain in the butt to deal with. Okay, you're going to be dealing with a series of these giant worms that are going to try and attack Croc. This is just the first of of the many, uh, the first of of several of these giant worm worm challenges. That is, unless this is actually the only one. I don't really remember if there's. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is the first out of out of um, the two giant worm challenges you're gonna deal with um, for this entire for the second world. And that one is just the warm-up round to the more annoying, more challenging one you're going to deal with. What I did coming up is ki is a real mistake. Um, do not, and I repeat, do not smash this crate right here. Otherwise, you won't have an opportunity, even though I did, did because I was able to time the jump correctly. Most of the time, do, do not um, destroy that one crate be until you've destroyed the one, the crate behind it. It should be pretty obvious as to what you have to do regarding um, this door, so yeah, let's just proceed on ahead, shall we? This is what I was meaning by the set of sometimes difficult platform jumps involving um, these disappearing wooden um, platforms. Anyway, these jumps are only somewhat difficult to perform. 
you're actually going to experience far more challenging um, um, wooden platform jumps in later levels and worlds. Before you ask and am wondering why did I not go back to the door yet, I was trying to see if that whether or not this new door would actually um, lead me back there or not. But as eventually as I found out, it didn't. Instead, it leads to an entirely new area, and that's what I suddenly um, did, did and just realized. Now what I just did, do not destroy the second box at all costs, because as you can see, Croc can't jump up and um, smash these other crates, even though they just contain gems in them. Okay, introducing the easiest button match ma matchup in the game. Fortunately enough, these penguins actually stay high enough in, high enough in the air in order for you to exactly hit them before they fall down into the water. I'm very fortunate that this is the easiest of the um, button jumping ma matchup games. Compared to that that sheep one you experienced and a later one that you'll be witnessing, this is so much easier. And I am so fortunate that um, it helped it make sure um, that there's a little bit of margin for error for this one. And I am very fortunate that that you're able to jump onto the platform with enough time to hit your targets instead of if you accidentally fall off the button because of Croc's somewhat bad jumping mechanics, um, you'll suddenly prevent yourself from hitting the target and getting the gobble that you need.
you're curious, I was kind of confused by this, but the button only um, allows the platform to be lowered that's up on top of this hill. Yes, whatever you do, do not destroy this crate just yet. You're going to need to collect the gems that are on top of um, this grabbable crate. Yeah, in order to collect the final gem. Now you can smash um, the box in order to collect its gems. And as you can see, generously enough, they decided to give you another um, heart unless you need, um, or in other words, another life if you needed it. Alright, introducing the second um, worm challenge in the game. And this one is far more convoluted and harder as you can per already see. And trust me, the worm attacks are not um, at all um, have a time sequence to them. They just happen at random. So this is going to be a lot more difficult to dodge the worm's attacks in order to be able to, as you can see, to get the gobble and to keep process too. Alright, we have now reached um, the final boss for World 2 now. I won't be showing you the final boss battle for World 2 in this video. It's because um, I will have ran out of time time for this video. So I will be able to so I will actually show it to you in the next video. And as you can already see, Baron Dante decided to use his magic to combine together several um, mountain goats um, 
into a gigantic, ugly, somewhat um, spiked horn yeti creature with a pointy nose. When on the green controllable platform, make sure that you avoid any, and I mean any of the huge snow, huge snowballs that are going to be shooting out from the um, frozen water right here. I, of course, was lucky not to get hit by any of them. Um, but trust me, you may not be so lucky when you're um, moving the platform along that tunnel. Anyway, this is the Master Chief One signing off, and I'll see you um, in the next part.